I was reading a study that says in Q1 of 2022, investors bought about 28% of single family homes. That's up 11% year over year. Every single family home an investor buys is a home that a family cannot buy and live in. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Dent, and I'm here with Juliet bennett Ryla and Jacob Cohen, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we'll be talking about a new housing concept that is being discussed as a dystopian. And Juliet, you have started kind of reading and writing about something called fractional investments, and Wired had a really good story on it. And it's basically where a lot of people end up owning a house. But could you explain a little bit more about what's going on here? Yeah. So this is not necessarily a a new concept, even to me, but fractional investment is when a bunch of investors buy a bunch of shares of a property and then basically do nothing except collect rental income, which I would say is typical of many landlords today. They pass it off onto a management company and they don't do anything. The difference here is a lot of these apps or startups that have been coming out lately allow you to get in on a property for as little as $100. So the one that Wired was looking at is called Arrived Homes. Sounds very aspirational. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Now, there are other ones that have been around for longer. Fundrise has been around for longer. There are real estate investment trusts. But Arrived Homes, you can get in on a rental home, which is like a, a single family home or a vacation property for as little as $100. They say they have funded over 240 properties worth $89 million. Wow. And I looked at a couple. They all have fun names. One is the Brookwood. That is in Atlanta, <laughs> which is a very rough market to buy a home if you're Absolutely. actually looking to buy and live in a home. It's a three-bedroom house. It runs for about 1900 a month, and it has over 1,100 investors. Another one is the Oasis. It's a very colorful Nashville vacation rental. It has 864 investors funded at about $733,000. So you're looking at a lot of people who own a very small fraction of the house. It's not the same as like four friends go in on a four bedroom house because they can't find anything. Mm -hmm. And now they just live in a commune. It's very small. And so you put in a hundred bucks and you get a return on investment of of whatever this rental income is or something like that, I, I take it. Right. And obviously there are fees involved and there's a property management company because you're not the one that's going and fixing the plumbing. So of course not. it's hard to say what you actually get out of it. In 2022, Arrive paid out $1.2 million in dividends, it said. But I actually have a little bit of experience with this. Um, oh. So a while back, I got a press release about a company called Here, which specializes in only vacation rentals. Uh-huh. Now, I am pretty strict in my view that I do not think housing, the houses that you live in full time, I don't think that should be a for-profit market. That's probably, that's probably like controversial, but- Well, I just, I, there's more than a few people who would agree. I don't think it's controversial. <laughs> I just feel like we have reached a point where the average person is rent burdened and we're seeing that play out in a lot of like really awful ways for people. And maybe I say that because I live in Los Angeles, which is in the middle of an affordable housing crisis. But here- It's only vacation rentals, a house that you would not live in full time because it's this beautiful six bedroom house in the middle of the mountains or something. So I decided to invest in here and just see what happened. Now, I did not invest a lot of money. I invested $200. So that's $100 in two different properties. And that was several months ago. And it told me my first payout would come in February, 2023. Mm -hmm. My portfolio value has appreciated to $213 and 36 cents. And the amount of money that I, as an investor have made is $1 and 81 cents. You should retire tomorrow. (laughs) Yes. So what I am saying is it seems like If you are somebody who is going to invest, obviously you're going to get in, you're going to get out what you put in. So it is not necessarily like, oh, I have almost no money, but I can be a homeowner. Like you're going to get a dollar and 81 cents. So yeah, which is like kind of savings account at a local bank kind of interest right there. (laughs) Yeah. So basically, yeah. And it's just kind of like a, it seems like this. Airbnbification of everything. Yes. You know, the vacation homes, like you said, at least that's a vacation home. There's not, I mean, there is demand to live in a lot of those places, but not quite like there is in like Los Angeles or, or mm-hmm. Manhattan or something like that or Boston. And with the, the names like the Oasis, they're, they're just, it, it's like now creeping into 
home ownership. And I think one thing that you were mentioning earlier is, is we have a situation where there are so many owners, maybe there's hundreds now for some of these houses, certainly dozens. And there's just like some random property manager. One of the biggest problems that has happened, especially for people with lower incomes, is that when they do need something fixed on their house, it's really hard to get it done because no one really knows who owns it. The property manager is not always accountable. And now it seems like yeah, this- Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like the the internet, this company is kind of taking that model and, and who knows, it, it might work well in some cases, but it's taking that model to, it's gonna be able to grow, I guess, quite, quite a bit more than what we've already seen, I think. Yeah, and I would be curious to know what the experience of living in one of these homes actually is. I personally live in a building where- uh, I know who the building owner is because I did a lot of legwork to look it up. But most people who live in my building with me do not know who technically owns this building. We deal with a property management company. They're impossible to get a hold of. A lot of us have really taken on managing the building ourselves. Oh, oh um, wow. <laughs> and that is something that I feel is common among people that I know. It's like, I can't get this done, so I fixed it myself. I've also heard a lot of negative feedback from people who have stayed in those automated hotels where everything is powered by AI and robots. And that yeah. has been a horrible experience. Like there are just some things you can't automate. And I'm just wondering what is the experience of living, actually living in one of these homes where you don't, you don't know your landlord. You don't have the mom and pop landlord that lives next door. You have this faceless entity. What is that like? Well, it's not how I envisioned the American dream. I guess it's just changing to some extent to, to no. say the least. And you know, I think some of these investors, I, I read a couple of stories where people were talking about their experience. They have, they claim, made a, a reasonable amount of money or an sure. amount of money that they're happy with that they hope they can one day turn into a down payment on their own home. But a lot of these investors are people who are doing this because they cannot afford a home, which mm -hmm. would be their preference. Arrived to wired about 40% of its investors are renters. A lot of these houses are in places where investors are snapping up properties. It looks like in I was reading a study that says in Q1 of 2022, investors bought about 28% of single family homes. That's up 11% year over year. Every single family home an investor buys is a home that a family cannot buy and live in. But in some cities, it was even higher, Atlanta being one of those cities. And that's where a lot of these these properties are. Absolutely. Jacob, how are, how are prices in Boston these days? You you saving up for a, for a house or able to? I, I'm not currently saving up for a house here in, in Boston. I mean, you know, I'm in the age bracket where most of my friends are still students who are coming here for a couple of years just looking for the cheapest option and trying to re-sign months in it you know a few months in advance just for in the next year and I, I was talking to some friends that have gotten new lease agreements that have gone up more than 30 percent year over year and it's Why? kind of like what do you do when when that happens this all reminds me actually of adam newman's new companies and right. I'm, I'm still not sure. And I'm not sure if anyone really knows exactly what that model is. Do you know? It's, it's a model very similar to WeWork where you all kind of have a communal apartment building that you live in. I think I think it's one of those things that sounds really nice on paper. Like, oh, I know all my neighbors and we have all these things that we do together. Let's have a barbecue. But, you know, that, that bears out to be seen how it's actually going to work. Yeah. Adam Newman, can you stop this housing crisis? We want to know. <laughs> Come on the show sometime, maybe. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. Juliet, Jacob, thank you. And thank all of you listeners for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, sign up at thehustle.co slash email, and we'll catch you next week.